Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, cost of capital. Uh, first of all, a few definitions are given for cost of capital. The first one is, a uh, cost of capital is the minimum rate of return that must be earned to maintain the market value per share. That is one definition. The second one is, it is the rate of return required by those who supply uh, the capital. Uh, the second definition is very easy and of course it is also understandable and of course it is very easy to remember it. So what is cost of capital? Cost of capital means it is the cost that we pay for those who supply capital to the business. Of course when we want to start the business we need capital and capital is the amount that we need in order to start the business, right? So when you start the business, you need capital. So capital can be raised from different sources. For example, you can introduce your own money to the business. You can take loan from your friend. You can take loan, for example, from the market, from the banks, and so on. Or, for example, if it is a joint stock company, you can issue share in the market, right? So anyone who provides fund to the business or anyone who provides capital to the business, they expect something from the business in return, right? So they have some expectation. Why? Because when they provide the capital to the business, they need to receive something from the business. So whatever amount of profit or whatever amount of return they expect from the business itself is called what? Cost of capital, right? So it can be cost of debt. It can be cost of equity. It can be cost of anything, right? Anyone who provides capital to the business, they expect something from the business. They require something from the business to receive it. For what? For compensation of their capital. Why? Because they have provided their capital to your business. So you have to pay something, for example, for those people. So that amount which is required by those who supply capital to the business is called what? Cost of capital. So very simple. Like other things, for example, you manufacture something, there's a cost, right? You purchase something, for example, there's a cost. So the same thing is like capital. When you raise capital from the market, in order to run your business, so you have to pay something, uh, some amount for those who provide capital to you in order to run your business, right? So that is called cost of capital. So it definitely match with the second definition. It is the rate of return required by those who supply to the business. Let us say, for example, there are, for example, uh, let us say three examples. In condition number one, let us say there are three companies, for example, company A, Company B and Company C, right? Company A raise fund from the market. And for example, those who provide capital to this business, they need 10%. They need 10% return from the business. They need how many percentage return from the business? 10%. So for A company, cost of capital is equal to 10%, right? Let us take another company, for example. In this company, those who provide fund to the business, they need 15%. They need how many percentage? They need 15%. 15%. Let me mention it here. 15%. So for this company, cost of capital is equal to how many percentage? Cost of capital is equal to 15%. Let us say, for example, there is another company. And when this company raise fund from the market, so those who provide fund to this business, they need 8% return. How many percentage return only? Only 8% return. So cost of capital for this business is equal to how many percentage? 8%. Remember one thing, the rate of return which is expected by shareholders or the rate of return which is expected by bond, by lenders, or we can say, for example, by bondholders, right? In the case of bond. So whatever rate of return they expect it is called basically cost of capital from the company perspective but it is called required rate of return or expected rate of return from those shareholders or bondholders perspective let us say in this example let me take a simple example for example see suppose this is company this is my company right i have raised fund for example from azz bank for example from which bank for example there is a bank by the name of azz bank right IZ Bank, IZ Bank. Let me mention bank also. IZ Bank. I have raised fund from IZ Bank. IZ Bank basically expect how many percentage rate of return from my business? For example, ten percentage. This ten percentage which IZ Bank expect from my from my business, 
It's called expected rate of return from Azizi Bank perspective, but it is called cost of capital from my company's perspective. Right? From Azizi Bank perspective, it is called expected return. What return? Expected return. Right? EXP, for example. Or R also we can say it is R bar. We have shown in the previous in the previous chapter, we have shown it by the name of R bar, right? So this is called expected return from a ZZ bank perspective. But of course, it is called cost of capital from our perspective. Please don't be confused in this step that the amount that we pay from our perspective, it means from the company perspective, it is called cost. But of course, from those uh, who provide capital, from those perspective, it is called required rate of uh, return, basically. So this was a simple definition for cost of capital. There are a few factors, factors determining the cost of capital. Which factors can affect on the cost of capital? Following are the cost of following are the, the factors which can affect on the determination of cost of capital. What do you mean by determination of cost of capital? It means the following factors can increase cost of capital as well as can decrease cost of capital, right? Sometimes these factors effect and cost of capital increase. And sometimes these factors effect and cost of capital decrease in the, in the market. So this is called what? Uh, this is called factors determining the cost of capital. So let us go for a few of these factors. Basically, uh, these are not the total factors that can affect on the determination of cost of capital, but these are some of them which are very important, so we have to discuss it. So the first factor which can affect on the cost of capital is general economic conditions. In under general economic condition, I have just point out a few the factors which can affect. For example, demand, supply, and what? And inflation. Demand, supply, and inflation. What do you mean by demand, supply, and inflation? The first one, demand. If demand for capital is more in the market, if demand for capital is more in the market, in this case, cost of capital is more, like other commodities. So in this case, capital can be considered like other commodities, right? If demand for commodity increase, definitely price will increase. But if demand decrease, so definitely price also decrease. So if demand for, for a particular uh, source of fund increase in the market, definitely cost of that one also will increase. On the other side, the next factors, says supply if supply of a particular currency is sorry if supply of a particular fund increase or if supply of fund or capital increase in the market on that case cost of that one will decrease but vice versa if the supply decrease definitely the cost will increase so it depends directly depends on this one if supply increase so cost decrease if supply decrease the cost increase or opposite basically and the next factor is, of course, inflation. What do you mean by inflation? Inflation simply means increase in the price of the commodities. Increase in the price of the general commodities in the market, right? Or the price of the goods, we can say. Uh, or inflation can be defined as a decrease in the purchasing power of currency. You can say anyone. You can say inflation is equal to decrease in the purchasing power of the currency. Or you can say inflation means in increase in the purchasing increase in the uh, increasing the price of the commodity general commodity in the market right so the same can affect on the cost of the capital as well if inflation increase in the market cost of capital also increase if inflation decrease in the market cost of capital also increase why this is so because there is a formula what is the formula the formula is real income is equal to nominal income minus nominal income minus inflation right so this formula should be applied let us say for example i need for example 10 percentage real income real income what is real income income uh, the income after deduction of the inflation is called what real income right so let us say for example i need 10 percentage real income how much i need for example i need 10 percentage real income let us go for this formula then let us say for example i need 10 percentage real income this is my percentage of for example 10 percentage real income real income right this is my percentage 
which I need. This is my expectation that I have received, I have to receive from the market, right? Let us say, for example, if inflation, okay, minus this one. Let us say, for example, if inflation is equal to 5 percentage in the market, then the nominal rate of return should be at least equal to 15 percentage. At least should be equal to how many percentage? 15. If I need 10 percentage real income from the market, if inflation is, for example, 5 percentage, my nominal income should be 15. What is nominal income? Nominal income means the income which you receive from the market itself. That is called what? Nominal income. Okay? In this case, if inflation increase or decrease, my nominal income also will get changed in the market. Right? In this example, of course, you press equal, so you get 10 percentage. In the second case, again, let us say, for example, again, my real income or my expectation of real income is equal to, for example, 10 percentage. In this case, let us say, let us say, for example, inflation increased to 4 percentage. Inflation increased how many percentage? Decreased to 4 percentage. If it decreased to 4 percentage, definitely my, my nominal income expectation also will decrease to 14 percentage. So, let me say in this way that my expectation of income basically depends on the inflation. If inflation decreases, my expectation also decreases. If inflation increase, my expectation definitely also increase. Let me give one more example here. For example, 10 percentage real income, right? Okay. Let us say, for example, this time inflation increased to 7 percentage. How many percentage? 7 percentage. If inflation increased to 7 percentage, definitely my nominal income should increase to 17. Why? Because 17 minus 7, you get equal to how many percentage? 10 percentage. So let me summarize it. The... A real income basically depends on the on, on the inflation. So from the nominal income, you have to minus the inflation, then you can get what the real income. So at this one, from here, you can summarize that the cost of capital depends on the inflation as well. So if, if inflation increase, right, cost of capital increase, this is cost of capital. If inflation decrease, cost of capital also decrease. This was one of the factors. Second factor is risk. As I just mentioned, more risk, more cost, right? See, if a company is risky, for example, like B company, as I have mentioned here, if B company is risky, right? There is too much risk in B company. If B company want to raise funds from the market, those who provide capital for this company, they charge more. It means they expect more. From the fund provider, it is more expected, but from the company, it is more cost, right? So that is why it is said, more risk, more cost. If your company is more risky, so you have to pay more cost. If your company is less risky, like for example, number C, right? Like C company. If your company is less risky, you have to pay less. If your company is more risky, you have to pay more. If it is much more risky, you have to pay more. So cost of capital depends on the risk also. If you have started a company which is a risky company, definitely, so the expectation is more from the fund provider perspective. And of course, if their expectation is more, so the cost of the cost of capital is more from the company perspective. So please remember this point as well. And the next one is amount of finance required. More fund, high cost, right? So cost of capital depends on the fund as well. If you need more fund from the market, in this case, definitely cost is more. Why cost is more? Because as much as amount of fund is more, the repayment ability of the company decrease or the chance of default the chance of default increase basically right so when the chance of default increase definitely cost increase, definitely risk increase so if risk increase definitely you have to pay more but for a small amount of money of course the chance of uh, repayment is much more and the chance of default is less so that is why cost is also less and the last one is of course flotation cost what is flotation cost flotation cost means a uh, cost of selling the security in the market. For example, cost of, uh, we can say, uh, documentation, cost of, uh, uh, we can say, brokerage fee that you have to pay, advertisement fee you have to pay, uh, the amount that you pay in the stock market for brokers for, we can say, as a commission and so on, or as amount to underwriters. So those amount which you pay at the time of selling of the securities, right? So security or those documents that you want to sell in the market, like shares, like bonds, and so on. 
So if you want to sell bonds, shares, and so on in the market, definitely you have to incur some cost. If that cost is more, cost of capital is more. If that cost is less, the cost of capital is less. So these are the factors that can affect on the cost of capital. Once again, if we want to summarize what is cost of capital, cost of capital is the amount of uh, profit which is expected by those who, capi who uh, supply capital to the business. Uh, that can be expected by equity shareholders, by preference shareholders, by bondholders, by banks, and so on. Several factors can affect on this one. A few of them are like this. Demand and supply and inflation, then risk, then amount of finance, then flotation cost. Of course, the political condition of the country, war in the country, competitions in the market, right? Thousand other factors are there which can affect on this one. But these are a few of them.